Hi, family. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, that's right. The thumbnail you saw is no joke. I put down, get your money out of the bank and run because it, this is dangerous times right now that we're watching and the Fed is making it even more of a concern for me. So I'm going to go over how the bank is actually allowed to keep some of your money. Yeah, I know you're watching. You're going, what? That's right. I'm a little bit nervous myself. And for those who have a good amount of cash in the bank, you're going to want to watch this video. This is not clickbait. This is going to be something that goes through the 2008 up through 2010 and what we're dealing with now and how they've changed the game with the rules. Remember back in the day when banks got bailouts? Now there's something called a bail-in, and you're going to want to see this. Now, before we get into it, of course, I do want everybody to get their free cash. The Moo Moo link down below. Uh, as you can see right here, take advantage of this thing. You're going to click on the link. You're going to go over there. You're going to put $100 in. You're going to go ahead and get five free stocks worth up to $10,000. If you put two grand or more in, you're going to get 15 stocks worth up to $30,000. Take advantage of that. And of course, after that, take advantage of the Weeble link down below. Click that right below the video, and you're going to put a dollar or more in. You'll get up to 12 free stocks worth up to $30,000. Have everybody in the house take advantage of these two things, $101 in each one, and you get a chance at a lot of free stocks. Now we move into the discussion. And frankly, family, I just want to have this. I hope it never happens. I'm not here trying to spread fear and everything else about the banking system. Understand this is only going to affect a select few. But I actually went out, interviewed bankers for this. I'm talking, uh, I don't want to get into who and all that to save them, give them their privacy. But I did sit down, have a long conversation about the guarantees that we get with our money because I had a, a substantial amount of money in the bank and I was concerned about where we're going and the ratings of the banks and if they did fail, if the real estate collapsed. So I had a lot of questions and they were answered. And the answers I got were not what I thought they were. And that's why we're here. I did further research and this is one of these videos that wakes people up. Now, first off, let's start with why I'm concerned. One, here you go. Wharton professor Jeremy Siegel says Jerome Powell is making one of the biggest policy mistakes in the Fed's 110 year history, and it could lead to a major recession. Listen, this guy is no joke. He knows what he's talking about. He is a professor over at Wharton School of Business at the University of Penn. This is where the top people in the world go. And so when he comes out and says that this could be the worst mistake in 110 years, you open up your eyes, you wake up, you dust the cobwebs away and you listen. All right. And so at this point, we have to sit there and look and say, OK, this guy, an educator, this is all he's done, dedicated his life to economics. And he understands that the Fed is going to aggressive and there's a lot of bad things that could happen. And I believe him. Now, with that being said, what do we got here? Well, we know that the Fed has come out lately and stated that they want the housing market to be affordable for everyone. They want everyone to be able to get a home. And lately, and hear this, the Fed to reset the U.S. housing market through a difficult correction. Five things to know about the plan. So when they start talking about correcting the housing market, the Fed's going to correct it. It's going to be difficult. You know what that means? It's going to be pain and no gain. Houses, pr housing prices are going to collapse because they want to bring them down. If you look at the gains of housing prices over the last few years, it was ridiculous. So they want to reset it. They want to bring them back down. So I'm expecting a lot of pain. And that's one of the reasons I think they want to keep the rates higher for a long time is to get the housing to slow down tremendously. If they can get them popped up to the terminal rate around 4.6, keep them there for as long as they can while the housing continues to collapse and there's going to be pain with unemployment, they're going to be happy because housing prices could come down dramatically. And yes, they'd make it more affordable for those who have jobs because I would expect the unemployment level to go to 7 to 10 percent and that would be ugly. And there's all kinds of things that go with that. But what's the one big thing that can happen when people stop paying their mortgages? Because we know what happened during the 2008 to 2010, 2007 to 2010 era is that when the houses became overvalued and everybody was buying them and then they dropped undervalue, people walked away. They walked away from paying their mortgages. And as they did that, don't forget about the Lehman Brothers. What happened with Lehman Brothers? They had a lot of exposure to that. And of course, they went bankrupt. And then you had other banks out there that had a lot of real estate exposure, they went bankrupt. All these banks went under. And of course, uh, you risk some things when you have money in a bank that goes under. As you remember, you ever hear the term bank runs and all that, and they're afraid banks aren't going to have enough money and all this. So as we move forward, we get into what the crisis is. And this is what I want to talk about right here. Let's go ahead and pull this up. The crisis fallout, the change. 
what happened during the Great Recession? I know you're thinking, hey, what are you talking about losing money, though, Mo? That's next. Let's just cover up the history. And here's the chart I wanted to share with everyone. Let me get this one. Uh, you can't get any bigger. This is it. So this chart right here, during the immediately and during and immediately after the Great Recession, this is way back 2007 to 2010, I call it. But the, I, I tell you guys this, the effects of all these things are not immediate. They can lag. And I've said this about what the Fed's doing. The effects of what they're doing are going to move and carry on for a very long time. Not when they pivot and all of a sudden, hey, we're going to drop the Fed rate by 50 basis points. The damage will be done for years, as you can see. Now, these are banks. U.S. bank failures, balloons spiking to roughly 150 banks. All the people in that bank. Remember, once that bank fails, we're all in trouble. All right. And so you can see 2007, everything was happy. Go lucky. Everybody's good. 30 banks in 2008. Uh-oh. Remember Michael Burry talking about uh, the movie, The Great Short, and the housing market's going to collapse? They knew it. And then 148, it happened. It started going crazy. 2009. But didn't the market start popping back up and going crazy in 2010? Yeah, but look at the banks still failing. 154. Markets always kind of react before everything's back. And so at this point, 92 banks failed. 51 banks, 24 banks, 18. Then they came out with all the different uh, rules, Dodd-Frank, all that good stuff to try to get the banks more secure, which they are. And they got away from those no verification income loans. But it doesn't mean that every bank is solid. It doesn't mean that all banks can withhold any kind of issue in the economy. And that's why we're here talking. So the next thing I want to show you, though, take a look at this. This is on the FDIC. Everybody's going to say, I'm an FDIC covered, Mo. Yes, you are. You are FDIC covered. And I actually went in and I talked about this to the lady. I had, a, I had more than what was covered in the account. All right. And at that point, I talked to her. I said, there's a lot of people in the world that have like billions, millions, billions. And she, and she said, yes, they do. And at that point, I said, what happens if a bank fails? What happens to my money if this bank fails? And she said, well, uh, you uh, they always do the best to try to get your money back. But if you lose, we lose all the money and say you had five hundred thousand in there, it's covered for two hundred fifty thousand. She said the FDIC would insure 250,000. I said, well, that's fantastic. So, and she goes, yes, but the other 250,000 is gone. You don't get it. And I was, I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, what, 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 what? Hold on here. And so I, she said, so you want to make sure you always have under 250,000, which at the time uh, I had a little bit over. And I said, okay. I go, but what happens if I have, say, 250,000 in and it fails? I, I'll just get my check for that, right? And she says, that's where people are mistaken. And I said, what do you mean? She said, I go, when would I get it? Like the day she goes, there is no guarantee of when you will get it. They say they try to do it quickly, but it can take as long as they want it to do. And they can make payments on that for as long as they'd like to. And you get it. And I was like, are you kidding me? And then I came to the site to double check. And it's federal law requires to make payments as, uh, as soon as possible with no date. And soon as possible can be anything, all right? And that's the scary part. Upon failure, and now they come out and they say they do try to make it win two business days of failure, but other people might have to wait longer. Some deposits, uh, some people, if they have uh, written trust, fiduciaries, and they got others with administrators and employee benefit plan, they are going to wait even longer, a lot more paperwork, and it can get ugly. But that's not the thing. That's not the unknown, which is the scary part. This is it. Check this new little thing out. We know what a bailout is called, right? That's when the government comes in and supports the banks and they, they take care of everything. But what about a bail-in? What's a bail-in? And so this is it. I'm going to read this because you need to pay attention because I don't think, I, I asked a lot of people, ever hear of a bail-in? They had no idea. So let me educate you on what a bail-in is. A bail-in provides relief to financial institution on the brink of failure. They're going to fail. And the economy is going south. Everything, we're in a major recession. Banks are going to fail, I promise you. And not all, but a lot of banks, you're going to see that number start to go higher, just like the last major recession. All right. Requiring the cancellation of debts owed to creditors and depositors. All right. A bail-in is the opposite of a bailout, which involves the rescue of a financial institution by external parties, typically governments, using taxpayers' money. So who helps out? 
right here. Bail-in is what? Requiring the cancellation of debt owed to creditors and depositors. The banks owe you money. Do they have to pay them? No. A bail-in says they don't have to pay you. All right. Bailouts help to uh, prevent creditors from taking losses while bail-ins mandate creditors take losses. So if a bank owes you money, you may not get it. A bail-in helps a financial institution on the brink of failure by requiring the cancellation of debts owed to the creditors and depositors. Bail-ins and bailouts are both resolution schemes to help these distressed situations. And bail-ins mandate the creditors take losses. Bail-ins have been considered across the globe to help mitigate burden on taxpayers as a result of bank bailouts. So now they're going to shift it from taxpayers to those in and depositing and those who gave banks money. All right. And so understanding it, there's a lot of different things, that, why it came about, uh, requirements for it, and then get into it. I highly suggest a lot of people go. Typical bail-ins are instituted for one of three reasons. A financial institution collapse is not likely to create systematic or systemic problems and lacks too big to fail consequence. So the smaller banks, right? They are going to say, just do a bail-in. The government does not possess the financial resources necessary to bail them out. Like you can't afford it. All right. These are the smaller banks you just talked about. You can't afford it after spending trillions every year. I know they can. The resolution framework requires that the bail-in be used to mitigate the number of taxpayer funds allotted. Now, depositors of, in the U.S. Are, protect, are protected by the FDIC, which ensures each bank account for 250000 In a bail-in scenario, financial institutions would only use, and here it is, guys. And I know for most people watching this, this will never affect you but they would only use the amount of deposits that are in excess of a customer's $250,000 balance. That means if you have 500,000 in there, a million, if you have a million in there and they go through a bail-in after we see the collapse of the economy, you just lost 750,000 and you have no recourse. You'll get 250,000 back from the FDIC. And for everyone who doesn't even have that in, you lose your money, but the FDIC is insuring it but there's no guarantee on when they will get it to us. That's the thing the lady told me. She's like, you, they hope to get it to you quick, but depending on how bad things are, uh, there's no guarantee written in, in there that they have to get it to you within a day, within a week, within a month, within a year. If they question anything, it can take a while. And after I read through it, I see that there is no guarantee from the FDIC. It's just how long will we have to wait? Will it be two days or will it be two years? Will it be two months? I know a lot of people have money in there. Uh, I would say check out your bank ratings, go online, look up bank ratings, uh, security, how well are they uh, financially secure? Look up these things because this is a scary time. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that, look, check it out, the Cypress experiment. They did this. They did a bail-in. And back then it was people with deposits larger than 100,000 euros. They lost all their money above and beyond this. And this is out there in Cyprus. But check this out. They, they're they going to make it right. In return, the deposits re, uh, received bank stock from the bank that was failing. However, the value of these stocks did not equate to what they took from the depositors. So they're trying to make it right, but they're just taking your money, forcing you to take the shares of the bank as well. You In 2018, you can see the European Union. For all my fans over there watching in the uh, European Union, you're not off the hook. This isn't just the U.S., all right? And in 2018, they began looking at more broadly incorporating bail-ins. Right before all this is going down, don't sleep on this. I'm not I'm telling you. In a speech at the, well, whatever you want to call a lot of or a lot of acronyms there, A I A D I in the ERC International Conference, and we have the Bank of International Settlements settlements discuss the bail-in plans. In the European Union, a new resolution framework is being considered that would potentially incorporate both bail-in and bail-outs. Bail-ins would be involved in the first phase. That's where they go first before they try to help out the banks. It would take everybody's money. Then the government comes in and says, well, everybody's already hit, and then we'll go. And so this, I'm telling you, I am just frustrated with this whole scenario that is unfolding very rapidly. And you can see that this is going to get bad. The Fed is out there doing what they need to do. It's like all the central banks around the world are racing to raise rates. And what do we see? This new term, bail in, not bail out, bail in. And this is not just the U.S. This is all over. And what other area is crashing right now? China's crashing. Don't look at, don't think that they're 
out of the, the woods yet. They have their real estate issues over there that are collapsing. You could see similar things happening in the U.S. as they make the mortgage rates too high. Everybody and people, the investment properties, the adjustable rate mortgages where I'm afraid of because as they adjust and people can't afford them, they walked away. That was the big problem back in 2008 and 2009. Once they had to recalculate how much they had to pay for the adjustable rate, once they got hammered and they couldn't afford it and the value of the house was lower, but the payment went higher. They walked away and we could see a, a, a new run on this happening again. Now, those with the fixed mortgages, nice and low, 3%, 2% even. Now, you're going to look and see what happens to the property value and we'll see as we go forward. But hopefully, hopefully we don't ever get to this point. But I'm going to tell you this, with this major recession on the, the cusp here in 2023, I'm not so sure we're not going to see a bunch of banks getting just toasted and they're going to fail. And now we got to look, we don't have to worry about a bailout taxpayers. We got to worry about a bail in where they take everything. And then you have to go ahead and just wait for your money for those affected. And so it was an interesting video. I just thought I would do a little lesson on teaching. What do you think down below? I want to know what you think about this. Do you trust the banks? Do you trust the, the government with this handling? Do you, and that goes for the governments around the world. How do you feel about bail-ins? Do you think bail-ins are okay to take everybody's money that they went out and worked and don't, don't think it's just rich people? Maybe it's a, a person who's worked his entire life for 40 years, saved up all his retirement. He doesn't trust the market, so he puts it in the bank and he has like five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 that he earned from working 60 hours a week at a factory and now they're going to take it all except $250,000. Is that okay? And so I want to put that question out to you. And I don't always want people to think, well, it's Jeff Bezos we're talking about. No, he probably doesn't have an account with that much money even in and out of bank unless the bank is a guaranteed, you know, triple A best bank you can get. And so I, I do think this is going to affect a lot of uh, people. I think it could affect some of the older people in our country because they're the ones with the most money. And uh, so this is something I just wanted to bring to everybody's attention. A bail in. A bail-in. Can you imagine? All right. So if you haven't done it, come over to the Patreon. We're talking about a lot of different things. We got a big week coming up. We're talking about when we expect the rally to happen. That Patreon link is right below. Click that link. Come on over. We have a private Discord as well. And I would love to have your support. And then, of course, use the Moomoo Moo link right now. Hit that Moomoo Moo link. Go ahead and put $100 and you'll get five stocks worth up to $10,000 altogether. And, then of course, I have the Weeble link. The Weeble link also put a dollar in and you will get up to 12 stocks could be worth up to 30k as well so take advantage of all that and then come on over to the patreon i appreciate you stopping by let's get out there and make some money